We are about to witness an interesting showdown between a government agency and a private U.S. company. On September 8th, the Federal Aviation Administration published a document confirming the conclusion of the investigation into Starship's first flight, which occurred on April 20th of this year. In the release, the federal agency determined, in order to obtain new flight permits, SpaceX would have to take 63 corrective actions. Furthermore, they confirmed that these permits have not yet been issued, despite the fact that the second Starship is already assembled on the launch pad. For that reason, the space community believes that Starship will not be able to fly this month. However, just two days later, on September 10th, through a post on X.com, Musk shared a detailed list of these 63 changes, of which 57 are already completed. Congrats to SpaceX for completing and documenting the 57 items required by the the FAA for Flight 2 of Starship. Worth noting that six of the 63 items refer to later flights. Musk posted on X last weekend. First of all, I've got to say that the SpaceX team is truly amazing. All this in only a little over four months. And with a team like that, we're definitely going to Mars. The 63 corrective actions identified are divided into 14 sections, four of which concern the booster. In total, total, 24 changes concern the Raptor engines, while 25 are the Super Heavy. There are also 12 dedicated to the launch pad and the tank farm. For example, they were asked to increase the capacity of the Fire Suppression System, or C2, by 15 times. SpaceX technicians have reinforced the various protections between the engines and added control systems to monitor any propellant leaks. Musk had already stated prior to April 20th that the protections on boot Booster 7 were reinterpretations of those designed for the next prototype. They were therefore not optimized for that specific Super Heavy, resulting in an inefficiency when problems arose. In the event of a fire, SpaceX has also increased the capacity of the fire suppression system by 15 times. The major changes also concern the launch pad with the implementation of the water deluge system to prevent the base from being damaged. After Starship took off, pieces of concrete were thrown up to a few kilometers away, and the dust also reached some population centers. The report drew attention to several procedures for improving safety and component design, using additional prototypes for testing. Of the 63 actions, SpaceX has currently completed 57, while the further six will be adopted from the third launch. This is because they are inherent to components that cannot be replaced on current prototypes. Following the CEO's release, SpaceX also released another statement about what happened happened on April 20th, giving us some more data about that launch. The flight lasted 237,474 seconds, and the carrier reached a maximum height of 39 kilometers, which then ended with an explosion. This was triggered by the, auto by the Autonomous Flight Safety System, a system of explosive charges that comes into operation if the carrier risks becoming a danger to people and infrastructure on the ground. What led Starship to deviate from its trajectory was a series of fires that arose in the engine area of the booster following propellant leaks. However, SpaceX did not specify the reason for these losses. The fires also damaged several electrical parts, resulting in the interruption of communications with the primary onboard computers. Starship continued its uncontrolled ascent, leading to the subsequent activation of the AFSS. This, however, took longer than expected to destroy the entire carrier. This aspect was also carefully investigated by the FAA. A major reason behind the multiple hurdles that the rocket has presented to SpaceX is the Raptor rocket engine. Unlike the Falcon 9 rocket's Merlin engine, which is an open cycle gas generator design, the Raptor is a full flow staged combustion and methane fueled rocket engine. This makes it significantly more powerful than the Merlin and offers improvements in efficiency as all of the gases flowing through it are redirected to the combustion chamber. The cost of this efficiency is a trickier engine that's more prone to leakage, judging by the latest details shared by Musk, items related to leakage are the only ones remaining out of the list of 63 actionable items that SpaceX has to fix after Starship's first test flight. Some of SpaceX's first engines, built during the early days of the Falcon program, used ablative chamber pressure since the engines were easier to design and build. 
However, the need to make engines more reusable caused the firm to change this design since these chambers have to be eventually replaced. Now, the combustion chamber is cooled by the super chilled propellant flowing around the system, and the Raptor redirects these gases back inside the chamber to improve engine performance. Another key benefit of the Raptor system is its fuel choice. The Merlin uses kerosene for fuel, which generates soot. The Raptor, however, uses methane, which burns cleanly to improve engine maintenance. Of the six items that remain unchecked on the list that Musk shared, five are directly related to the engine or its components. The six items include igniter seal designs, oxygen valve and seals, the hot gas manifold, and avionics. The gas manifold was one of the first things that Musk talked about after the April test flight, explaining that the engines on the last rocket were somewhat of a hodgepodge. Those engines were built and tested over a period period of a year. So we have what's called a hot gas manifold. It takes the fuel rich gas from the fuel site powerhead, transfers it to the main chamber, or transfers it to an area above the main chamber where it then mixes it with oxygen rich gas and goes to the main chamber and combusts. Gas seals were one of the major things that SpaceX upgraded on the Merlin 1D over the previous version as they were prone to leakage. This leakage is one of the biggest risks on any rocket, particularly those that use multiple engines. Upgrades made to the Raptor engines for the next Starship flight include adding more methane sensors in the engine bay, designing components to capture any leaks if they might occur, adding more sensors for pump temperature, and improving the gimbling system. Judging by the requirements, another reason that the April test failed was because the 33 rocket engine system's gimbling system did not perform as expected, since SpaceX now has to lubricate the full gimbal assembly. Of course, the 63 line items require adding numerous additional items. For instance, for some upgrades that might be part of future flights, SpaceX has to replace manifolds, flanges, and valves. These upgrades have been made already, and the firm has added more than 90 cameras to monitor any leaks in the rocket that measures nearly 400 feet in height. Notably, managing these leaks and any resulting fires they cause is a key feature of the Starship April test flight mitigation report. SpaceX redesigned the fire suppression system for the next flights and increased its strength by, again, 15 times. Engine bay fires are a regular feature of the first Starship test flights, which flew the upper stage spacecraft. Finally, assuming the completion of 63 items are sufficient, it raises the question of SpaceX's remaining tasks prior to the launch. Presently, the primary hurdle is securing a launch license from the FAA. Specifically, SpaceX must execute all necessary corrective measures that impact public safety and submit an application for a license modification to the FAA, addressing all safety, environmental, and relevant regulatory prerequisites before the next Starship launch. Given the FAA's statement, SpaceX is currently in the process of applying for the license or may have done so in the past few days or weeks. To provide some context, the original launch license took approximately one month to be granted after SpaceX submitted the application. However, these timelines are inherently unpredictable due to various external factors and a lack of comprehensive information. The most probable scenario is that this application process has already commenced and a license could potentially be granted within a matter of weeks. This would align with the possibility of a launch taking place toward the end of this month. And there you have it, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.